we're going to try and extend on our knowledge and really look a knowledge of pneumatics and really look at flow control um, and the effects that can have in a pneumatic circuit okay now in fluids I'm here I'm just taking the kind of very basic cylinder sequence of A plus B plus A minus B minus and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to focus on this top level up here um, I suppose the part between our direction control valve that's controlling the cylinder and then the cylinder itself and this is really where the flow control occurs where we can increase speed decrease speed of cylinder extension and retraction and also um, have a look at pressure and how the pressure builds up and how we can kind of change the pressure so in here we're going to look at a particular component um, the first one is going to be this one-way flow um, restrictor and you can see really nicely when you click on a component you can right click and look at the um, an image of it to make sure that's the one that you have itself and it even gives you a description okay very useful so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in this flow controller here and what I'm going to really do is hopefully I'm just going to zoom in here to the top so we can really see the symbolisms um, so we're not going to worry too much about what's on the bottom now if I rotate um, this particular component okay and again I'm going to just zoom right in so we can really see <coughs> what we have here is we have two streams of where I can flow okay and you'll see if it's flowing up this stream here where you have this kind of arrow that Im uh, implies it's variable so we can increase or decrease that kind of pinch point there which is going to allow more air or less air to flow through so we only can control air in one way right and that's why it's called a one-way flow control valve because what happens is if air is coming in this way it can't go up this pathway here because the ball and the kind of avenue here is blocking it it has to go through the i suppose the reduction here the needle pin so it'll either get rid if we say we're reducing the the airflow the airflow will get reduced coming out on the way back if air is flowing back down this way well it actually can go down here and as it's blowing down this way the ball will kind of move out and it can blow down this way and this is the path of least resistance so it'll choose this way rather than going through um, this pathway so only when we're uh, only when air is flowing upstream is it's going is the air going to be uh, reduced or increased okay this is why it's called a one-way flow revolve uh, and the real kind of arrow here the way it's pointing up gives you a suggestion and an indication to how it's working as well so that when the air is flowing upstream it's going to be uh, pressurized okay and this arrow refers to meter in and meter out when the arrow is pointing in to the cylinder it means we are metering in and if we rotate it say 180 degrees we can connect this in and we are metering out now okay uh, and that is important that's got some implications it's really important especially in hydraulics and we're also going to look at some of the implications uh, on the way here uh, with new pneumatics as well okay so hopefully that makes a bit of sense and we're going to see an operation which might make it a bit better now the kind of standard way of thinking is to to meter out okay and that's generally the way we go so we usually have these pointing down the way because what we mean is we want to reduce the um, reduce the airflow on the exhausting side so you'll see if we just if I just operate this valve okay so don't mind that we have these errors because we haven't connected this component in yet I just want to operate this valve and you'll see that as air is flowing in we're going into the cylinders pushing it down and then we're exhausting on this line here okay so this is the exhaust line on the forward stroke so if we want to limit the forward stroke this is the part this light blue line is where we're going to exhaust or sorry where we're going to put the flow restrictor because we usually meter out as the air is flowing out and exhausting okay so let's just see that in operation if i delete this line and put the flow controller in 
and then if we press play, what I'm going to do is then reduce this right down to say 2%, and you'll see as we operate the valve, the air is going in. It has it's been blocked on this pathway because that kind of ball is being pushed into the um, pushed into the kind of seal, and it has to go down the restricted pathway. So that is metering out on the exhaust and that's generally what we try and do because what happens when we're metering out we um, are maintaining full force with the cylinder as it's moving out okay because you can see we have fully blue tick blue here which means we're getting full pressure behind that cylinder moving forward so full pressure full six bar whatever supply pressure is and then we're just exhausting it on the outlet okay if you wanted to also exhausted on the way of coming back you can of course put in another flow control valve um, and again we'd want to sorry hang on you can go undo and then rotate 90 and we like to keep it both metering on the out connect that up and you'll see we press play and we can reduce this down to percent and you'll see when we operate the valve we have reduced flow going out and also reduced flow coming back okay and again this is both happening on the metering out so we're maintaining full pressure and we're reducing the speed okay so that is metering out. What we're gonna do in a different video is we're gonna look at when we change this orientation the other way and we meter in and the effects that can have. So we're gonna check that in a different video.